The hemagglutination assay is a really convenient and quick way of measuring the amount of virus in a sample. It works for many, but not all, viruses, and it's those viruses whose envelopes are able to bind to molecules on the surface of red blood cells. And this is, of course, not part of the life cycle of those viruses, but it's a very convenient thing for us. So this assay relies upon the very convenient fact that we can see what happens to red cells with our naked eye when they're in a vessel such as a round bottom well. Because on their own, they'll naturally sink to the bottom and form a button at the very tip. As you can see here, the cells are settling out under gravity and sliding to the very bottom of the tube. However, if you mix the right quantity of the right virus with your red blood cells, instead of getting a button at the bottom of the tube, you get a shield. This happens because the virus glycoproteins are able to bind to molecules called silic acids on the surface of the red blood cells, cross-linking them so that when they fall to the bottom of the tube, they form a lattice which spreads around the bottom and doesn't sink to form a button, but a shield on the bottom surface of the well. We can turn this into an assay of virus concentration as follows. We start with a plate of round bottom wells into which we've put an equal volume of saline in every well. We then take a test sample, usually taken from a culture of virus grown in the laboratory, and dilute it in those wells of saline to give us a serial dilution. If we now add a red blood cell suspension to those wells and allow the red cells to settle, the last well in the dilution series showing a shield is said to have one hemagglutinating unit of virus in that well. Now, by taking into consideration the volume we've added to the well and the dilution of the virus added to that well, we can calculate a titer in terms of hemagglutinating units per mil of the original virus preparation. 